Welcome back to our series on DataBender. As promised, this video, which is number two in the series, will dive deeper into this module in micro mode and a few shift functions. My goal here is to help you unlock everything that DataBender can do so you can really get everything out of it. We'll also be covering new firmware and everything you can do with that. All right, this is all super fun and you're gonna love it, but it's a lot, so let's do this. We covered this in the first video, but I'm just going to show you again how to switch from macro mode to micro mode. It's just this switch right here. Green is micro, blue is macro. Micro mode is everything that macro mode is, but on a much deeper and more customizable level. Essentially, you have complete control over the buffer, where in macro mode, what DataBender does is it manipulates the buffer for you. If you want to create glitchy manipulations entirely unique to your patch, micro mode is for you. So let's start with bend, micro bend. This control acts as a playback speed going down three octaves and up three octaves. When the playback speed is forward, this LED is blue. If you see it turn cyan, it's showing that it's on a specific octave above or below the original playback speed. Pressing bend will toggle the playback to reverse. And for reverse, the LED is green unless it's on an octave. And then it's gold. Adding new features and functions to DataBender was great fun. And we're really excited to share this next new one. One volt per octave tracking on bend in micro mode. So if we're not already in micro mode, let's switch into micro mode. And we'll start with inserting our CV into the bend input, and you can hear it work right away. When you update your data bender, it automatically performs a software calibration to get your module tracking. But if you need pitch perfect accuracy with your sequence, you'll want to calibrate your data bender properly. I'm going to show you how to do that. If you recently picked up a data bender and it's already updated to 1, 4, 4, or higher, then you don't need to calibrate your module. Since that firmware is released, every data bender shipped out is calibrated and tested using industry leading equipment. But for those who are updating their module for the first time or updating a used module that may or may not have been calibrated, you can follow these steps to get your data bender tracking 1 volt per octave. And if you're not sure how to get one volt, the equivalent would be sending out a CV that's one octave above the root note on a sequencer. Let me show you how to do this on Bloom. All right, as I stated, you can use any sequencer to do this. Um, I'm gonna use Bloom today. And just for an auditory uh, <laughs> reference, I'm gonna use uh, Chord. So for those who uh, just wanna get through this really quickly, you power your module on holding down mode. This takes you into calibration mode. And then you send one volt to bend, hit the button, send three volts into bend, hit the button. Hit shift and you're out of calibration mode. That's it. For those who wanna understand this a little bit more, <laughs> um, we're gonna do this again and we're gonna do it a little slower. If your understanding of scales and notes and voltage is not super advanced, then that's awesome, you're gonna learn something great here and it's going to be super casual and easy here we go so i'm going to hold down mode and turn it on okay and again we're in calibration mode you can tell because of the red and the white leds nothing plugged into data bender and you don't need a scope either because whether you understand voltage or notes or not you can definitely i promise you you can hear an octave so we're going to go to the voltage monitor on our scope here and cord is just droning through this and you can see that we're sending no voltage on on channel one here or it's sending 0.01 i don't really care so you can hear one octave happen here right you can hear that Okay, and you can see that one volt per octave is happening here. We're sending one volt now. Okay, so we're gonna take that and we're gonna put it into the CV of bend. 
and I'm going to hit bend once. All right. Now I'm going to go up to three volts. And again, you don't need a scope. You can hear two more octaves. Two volts. Sorry, three volts. Hit bend once again. Turns green. You've successfully calibrated your data bender. Hit shift. And you exit back to where you were. Hope you've enjoyed this little dive into synthesis and voltage. Let's get back into our main tutorial here. Okay, let's get into break mode in micro mode. So micro break mode. There are two modes in the break button and gate input in micro mode, traverse and silence. So let's start with traverse. First, let's remind ourselves that data bender has an active buffer that's constantly recording. The buffer size is the time map, and the chunks in the buffer is the repeats. I know we talked about this in the first video. I just wanted to touch on it really quick. I have a sample going into Data Bender that will help show how you can scrub through or traverse this buffer in micro mode. Nine, when the LED ten, is not one, illuminated, two, we're in traverse two, mode. Three, and the brake knob four, is the five, way we can nine, control six, the seven, movement seven, eight, in the subsections eight, nine, of the buffer. Ten, ten. One, so cool. One, two, two, three, three, four, On the four, far four, left five, of the knob, six, the first seven, subsection eight, will be selected. Nine, On ten, the far right one, of the knob, two, the last subsection, three, three, which is determined eight, by the repeats, nine, will be selected. Ten, one, three, so when repeats is set to one, which is all the way left, this has no effect. All right, now we're going to talk about silence. When the LED is illuminated like that, the control acts as a duty cycle for the amount of silence introduced. On the far left of the knob, there's no silence. On the far right of the knob, 90% of the playback buffer will be replaced with silence. We've also added two new corrupt modes in the latest firmware update, a DJ filter and vinyl simulation. The DJ filter is indicated by the purple LED on corrupt, and it's a low-pass, high-pass filter combo for Databender's audio buffer. The null position for this effect is a bit different from the rest of the corrupt modes, and is right here at the 12 o'clock position. We placed a nice amount of space here for you to easily get back to an unfiltered spot while still being able to dramatically sweep from low pass to high pass filtering, which is how DJ filters have always felt, right? There was a very fun, performative experience. Vinyl simulation is the second new corrupt effect, which emulates the pops, and cracks, and hisses, and timbres of old vinyl records. You'll know you're in vinyl sim mode when the corrupt LED is this nice, warm amber color. At its lowest end, vinyl sim is very subtle, with the occasional pop and faint white noise hiss. As the knob turns clockwise, more pops, cracks, and hisses are introduced. When the knob is fully clockwise, an irresponsible amount of dust and scratches cover our buffer and some filtering also occurs. All right, let's talk about the shift functions. I know everybody hates shift functions, but the thing is that these shift functions are to some extent a set it and forget it sort of function. So use the manual, change your setting, move on. Plus, it's just great stuff. Now, since there's two new corrupt effects on Data Bender, which we just covered, there's five total effects that can be cycled through using the corrupt button or the gate input. But if you're ever wanting to just patch with the original corrupt effects, there's a simple way to bring that functionality back to your data bender. Holding shift and pressing the mode button will toggle in between the new and original corrupt effects. When the LED is blue, all five effects are available. When the LED is green, only decimate, drop out, and destroy are available, like the original. Holding shift and turning time will allow you to set the window applied to each individual stutter. At the far left of time, the window has sharp edges that introduce glitchy clicks and pops that are perfect for glitchy percussive textures. When the knob is fully right, windowing has sloped edges, 
perfect for ambient swells and adding subtle textural additions into your patch. The default windowing is indicated by a blue LED blip. Holding shift and pressing break will reset DataBender to its default settings. These are the default settings. Holding shift and pressing clock will change the response state of gate inputs from latching, which is blue, to momentary. The default mode is latching, which requires two gate inputs to activate or deactivate the input's function. In momentary mode, gate inputs will respond when the inputted gate signal is high and return to its original state when the gate is low. The effect must be deactivated, the LED off, prior to the inputted gate signal to operate. Holding shift and pressing bend will change the stereo behavior of macro mode controls. There's two modes. The first mode is unique mode, which is the blue LED, where the left and the right channels experience unique bend and break effects while in macro mode. Shared mode is the green LED, where the left and right channels get shared bend and break effects instead of unique bend and break effects. Corrupt as reset is one of my favorite things to do with DataBender. Holding shift and pressing corrupt will change corrupt's gate input into a buffer reset input, which is the green LED. When configured as a jack reset, the corrupt input will cause the internal or external clock to resync. This can be useful for synchronizing with a DAW or manually restarting the buffer and randomizing macro mode controls when running with a slow internal clock. In internal clock mode, this will resync the internal clock immediately, causing new audio to load into the buffer, possibly resulting in silence during certain bend and break settings. This does move the playheads into a reset position immediately, which can cause clicks. In external clock mode, this resets the subdivision counter to align the divided clock with an external beat. This will take effect on the next clock pulse. Holding shift and pressing freeze will change the freeze button's state from latching to momentary. Just like the gate behaviors, the freeze button can be configured in the same way. The default mode is latching, which is the blue LED, in which a full press on the button activates freeze and a second press is required to deactivate freeze. In momentary mode, freeze is active when the button is held and inactive when the button is released, which is great for punching in buffer freeze effects. Don't forget that settings are saved every time shift is pressed and released. Here's a list of everything which is stored. All of the next shift functions were included in the latest firmware update and we're really excited about all of them. So shift and repeats is our LED dimmer. Finally, you asked for it, we gave it to you. Yeah, this one has been hotly anticipated. Holding shift and turning the repeats knob adjusts LED brightness on DataBender. For the original brightness, turn the repeats knob fully clockwise. And of course, to dim your LEDs, turn the repeats knob counterclockwise. Next up, we have something that I've personally waited for for a long time, which is control over the stereo nature of DataBender. Holding shift and turning mix will control the level of stereo enhancement, which is applied to our buffer. What this means is that we now have control over how stereo our wet signal is. When the knob is fully counterclockwise, the buffer channels are placed at the center of the stereo field. As we turn the knob clockwise, the channels spread out farther and farther until they're fully independent on their respective channels when the knob is fully clockwise. This change is most notable when stereo behavior is set to unique mode. The final new addition to the shift menu can be found across these three knobs. When holding shift and turning bend, break, or corrupt, the knob acts as a CV attenuator for the respective effects CV input. When the knob is fully counterclockwise, the CV input is fully attenuated, and oppositely, no attenuation occurs when the knob is fully clockwise. And you'll notice that this LED will follow my attenuation as well. 
Keep in mind that the CV sent to the input offsets the effect from its pre-shift knob position, and that the knob will not update its position until the shift button is released and the knob is turned. That is everything that DataBender has to offer. I think you've now graduated from Qubit University with a degree in bending data. From digital glitches to tape manipulation and more, we at Qubit hope this tutorial better helps you harness the power of failure.